Hey guys, it is Carly, and today I thought I would bring you a new series where I go through my entire DVD slash Blu-ray slash VHS horror collection. Um, I did a brief like overview a while back just showing like, you know, the collection kind of like in full, but I didn't actually go through and show what I have, mainly because my collection's not that big, but I figured, what the heck, I might as well go through and show what I have currently and then maybe a couple years from now I'll redo the series to see how much the collection has grown but for now this is what I have. I'm doing it like this because um to be honest I don't have like a really good camera like that I can hold. Um, I tried to record this on my phone but unfortunately my phone can only record like nine minutes at a time and it kept going over so it was not working out so figured I would just record it on the old webcam until I finally get my hands on a decent camera and yeah, I'm just going to do it like this. As you can see, I have the first section lined up here. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and get right into what I have. So first up, uh, these are in alphabetical order, by the way. I'm one of those people who's big on the alphabetizing of the movies. And um, first up, we have 28 Days Later. Of course, starts with a number. Um, yeah, 28 Days Later, this is basically an infection movie from the year 2002. Everyone knows about this movie. Uh, I saw it for the first time just a couple of years ago, like two years ago, I think, and I really enjoyed it for what it was. I'm not really big on the infection slash zombie type movies, but, you know, it, I appreciate what it is. I think it still holds up today um, for being an early 2000s movie, and yeah, it's a pretty good film. Not one I would really go back to a whole lot, but I really liked it for a first time watch. Then next up we have 30 Days of Night, which is like a vampire type movie um, set in like Alaska or something like that. Um, I, you know, I try to watch this once at a friend's house, at a friend's like party, like Halloween party back in the day. And I was kind of in and out of it. You know, we were kind of half paying attention to it, just sitting around and had it on in the background. And can't really say that I watched it all the way through. And then I recently tried to watch it. Um, a couple months ago, actually, and I just fell asleep while watching it and then never felt like putting it back on. I don't know. It's just not really my type of movie. I really do have to give this a true watch one day because I know a lot of people love this one and respect this one a lot, but for me, I just really can't get into it. I think it just feels, I don't know, it just feels action-y or something to me. I don't really like the look of the vampires. It feels more like a zombie-ish type movie to me and I'm just not a big fan but I do have to give it another try one day. Next up we have 1408 which is a Stephen King adaptation. I always forget it is a Stephen King movie and um, I saw this once before when I was like 13 and I really really enjoyed it back then. Then I rewatched it again recently and I liked it even more. I actually gave this movie a 10 out of 10. I think it's really well made and a great psychological horror film um you know it's kind of confusing at times but at the end like I feel like I follow it pretty well to the point where it's not overly convoluted or anything like that so I really like that about it um I like that it's set in a hotel I always like my hotel type motel you know in type settings I think those are pretty cool it feels you know like a, it says on the back it's like the shining and misery kind of mixed together and you know that's pretty accurate um yeah I think this is a great great movie if you haven't seen it yet definitely check it out then after that we have a film called The Abandoned now this is one of the eight films to die for JP collects these movies and he accidentally rebought this one forgetting that he already owned it because he has so much stuff that he gets them confused sometimes and rebuy stuff so he Okay, passed it on to me, and I watched it, thought it was kind of boring, um, basically this woman, I think she goes back to, like, this house that was her parents or something, and it's in the middle of nowhere, then she gets kind of stuck in, like, this time loop, if I'm remembering correctly, and yeah, it was just kind of boring, repetitive, um, had, like, a gloomy vibe to it, and not something I would really care to watch again, but cool to have it in the collection. After that, we have the Alien Quadrilogy. This is the uh, first four Alien films, of course. Um, and I had never seen a single Alien film before this year. And I watched these all 
in a marathon because me and JP were going to see Alien Covenant in theater, so I had to familiarize myself with the series, and um, I watched all these plus Prometheus and the new one. Didn't watch Alien vs. Predator or anything, but, you know, uh, the first one is really, really good. Um, feels a lot like The Thing has that same isolated vibe to it, and of course it's like an alien type film and yeah it's definitely like a horror movie and that's what I like about it it's very atmospheric and well done I think it, I gave it like a nine or ten or something really high like that then part two um I what can I say it's also very well done very well made um but it is more of an action movie of course and that is not really my taste at all it is also over two hours long I believe like um yeah 154 minutes it says on here and I can't you know when a movie's really long I have to really really love that movie or else I get very bored and it's not that I got bored with this one it's just like the action stuff like kind of gets me after a while I prefer horror and then Alien 3 is one that I've heard mixed opinions on, but I actually personally liked it a little better than Part 2 just because it had more horror elements to it, I felt. And then, um, you know, Part 4, finally, Resurrection, um, generic title, Alien Resurrection. Um, I didn't like this one too much at all. I really couldn't get into it. I really had trouble paying attention to this one. I don't think it's horrible, but it's definitely the weakest in the series and um overall the alien movies are very well made very well done good acting and um, a lot of effort behind them i think they're great films but not ones that i would really go back to especially not now after marathoning them it's a terrible franchise to marathon it's just not too fun at all and all the movies are like two hours or so so that makes it even worse so you know probably only part one is one that i would really go back to then next up we have All Hallows Eve Part 2. Um, never saw Part 1, but I reviewed this on my 31 Days of Horror series, and I gotta say I did not care for it too much. This was the one, I believe, where the shorts were... There were, like, a lot of shorts in it, and um, they felt very, very short. Like, they were very rushed, and some of them didn't really make sense. Some of them seemed like they had potential, but didn't have enough time to evolve. And then there were, like... Probably like two that were kind of longer, and one of the longer ones I didn't really care for. It was kind of boring. So all in all, this one was kind of like a failure in my book. And the wraparound, the wraparound story was kind of just okay, you know, just happens out of no, like it just kind of ends basically at the end. There's not really any wraparound to it. It's just kind of the generic like um, horror ending, but it happens within two seconds. So this is not that great, really. Then we have Almost Human, which is an alien abduction type film of sorts where aliens take over like people's bodies and things like that. Um, it's an IFC midnight film. I think JP gave me this for Christmas and I gotta say I really enjoyed this one. It's a fun little film, you know, not much to it. Um, you know, it's nothing special, but it's definitely entertaining. Um, you could tell they actually tried with this one, like the acting was pretty okay in this one and you know the story was just like a fun little alien um extraterrestrial type film so i enjoyed this one like i said nothing special but nothing horrible either oops then after that we have altitude which is basically about five um teenage friends one of them is actually knows how to fly a plane and i i forget why they're on the plane uh says they're going for a week weekend getaway on the back cover um so yeah i guess that's what's happening and then basically the plane just keeps um going up and up and they're stuck in the air they don't know why the plane's kind of taking control of itself and they're trying to figure out how do you get out of this situation alive um you know i feel like this movie could have been better if like i think if I remember correctly, the dialogue in it was kind of cheesy and the acting wasn't too good and it kind of got on my nerves. Um, you know, the storyline's pretty creepy being in a plane. Like, I'm afraid of flying and I thought that was a pretty cool idea for a story. But I think, like, just the dialogue and um, acting overall was pretty weak in this one. I can't remember exactly if that's why I didn't like it, but I just know I did not care for it too much. So, um, yeah, it's nothing great. 
Then after that, we have Alice Kills, which is an awesome film. Uh, it kind of reminds me along the lines of a movie like May or American Mary, where it's basically following a girl who's, you know, kind of weird to begin with. And then uh, something horrible happens to her and she kind of spirals out of control into insanity, into this, like, bad person. I um, absolutely love films along these lines. Um, any film that's like this, send them my way or tell me about them because I love any movie like this. I'm definitely, it's always going to probably be an 8 and above for me if it's done right. Um, yeah, this was a great movie. I really have to rewatch this because I've only seen it one time, but I really, really enjoyed it. Um, can't say enough good things about it. This is definitely my favorite type of film. I don't know if you would consider these like character piece films. If so, that's probably like my favorite genre of horror movies. But yeah, Alice Kills, great movie. After that, we have American Poltergeist. Um, I remember it was two Christmases ago, I believe. My mom bought me a portable DVD player, which I love. I use it a lot to watch movies in my bed and things like that and helps me pay attention to movies. And then along with that, she bought me this movie and one other movie. I forget which movie. I think it was Insidious 3. And, you know, they're just like Walmart pickups. She didn't really know what to get. And, um... Obviously, this is one of those generic movies that you would find at Walmart. I mean, American Poltergeist, that's like a generic title. And then the cover is just, um, I don't think the cover has anything to do with the movie, actually. It's one of those films. But, I mean, you know, the plot was kind of cool. It was actually about, like, Lizzie Borden's ghost, which was interesting. I didn't expect that to be what it's about. I think the, I can't remember this one too well. I only saw it once, like, two years ago. But I think the acting was, like you know, mediocre in it, and the effects weren't that great, um, soundtrack was kind of cool, like the, or the score, rather, um, it wasn't as bad as I was expecting it to be, to be honest, probably not something I would rewatch, but it wasn't horrible. All right, and then we have the Amityville Horror, uh, the original, of course, I really enjoy the Amityville Horror. It's one that I always forget how much I do enjoy it. Um, I always think, like, I don't like this that much just because I'm not huge on the haunted house type movies. But this is obviously, like, a classic one. This isn't generic or anything like this. That, um, it's one of the original movies. And, you know, it still creeps me out. And um, some of it's kind of, like, slow and dated nowadays, you could argue. But I still think it's creepy. The house itself... I've always thought was really creepy and just the story in general. Um, you know, this one, you don't really, it's not one where you see actual ghosts popping out at you, but it's like what you don't see that's terrifying about it. And yeah, I really enjoy this. It's not one that I put on a whole lot, but it's one that I will rewatch, you know, time and time again. Next up, we have, once again, Amityville, the original, but it's in this double pack with the remake. Uh, yeah, um, the remake is one that I actually enjoyed, too. Um, the remake obviously uses the visuals of, like, an actual ghost girl haunting the little girl and, you know, just visuals in it of ghosts and stuff like that. And, you know, I think it, it works in this movie. I think it's pretty creepy. Obviously, like... The first one didn't have it, so they they kind of amped it up with this movie and tried to make it scarier. And, you know, I think it actually does work in this movie. It's not, like, cheesy or anything. I think it's still creepy. And say what you want, but I think, like, Ryan Reynolds does a pretty good job in the in the role. Um, It's not a role that you usually see him in. He plays in, like, you know, like, superhero movies and, like, comedies nowadays. But I think he does a pretty solid do uh, job as the dad going crazy, so... I enjoy the remake. Not as good as the original, I'd say, but I think they're both solid films. After that, we have this um, shitty falling apart audition. Um, this cover is, like, just basically, like, sitting on here by a thread. I got this, I think, on one of those sites, like, Second Spin or something, where, um, I forget if it was that one. It might have been Go Hastings or something, where you don't know, you know. They're always, like, really cheap. Um, I think this was only, like, probably three dollars or something like that so you know you kind of get what you pay for but at the same time this does suck like the whole all the plastic is basically off the cover and I wish I could get a different copy but 
Yeah, Audition, uh, it was a movie I had wanted to see for a while because it was so, you know, hyped up for being really disturbing, and I gotta say, it was definitely a little bit overrated because um, it's really only the ending part that's extremely disturbing and things like that, and it's a very long movie. Um, the you know, it's almost two hours, and most of the movie is kind of just like this romantic love story between the girl and the man, so, you know, um, but that being said, like, I really enjoyed this movie, like, I didn't mind that it was a lot about the romance between this, like, weird shy girl and this dude, um, I think it's a pretty well-done movie, not one I would rewatch a lot just because it is so long and it was a little overhyped, but I still really enjoyed it. Then we have the Beast in Heat trilogy, or not trilogy, it's just um, three random, triple feature rather, it's three random horror movies, and I mean completely random, I don't know what the decision was to put these together, but I bought this for the last one late fee, and decided to obviously check out the other two because I'm weird about, I always have to make sure I watch every movie in my collection, so the other ones are Flesh for the Beast and Shadow Dead Riot, um, Late Fee wasn't that good. Like, the wraparound story was actually pretty cool because it was just people on Halloween watching these horror movies, but then the horror movies that they're watching is what the other two stories are, and, um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, the other two stories are just, like, not good at all. Like, they're trying to, it's, like, supposed to be them watching these movies, and the movies just suck, but the wraparound's not that bad. Then Flesh for the Beast was pretty bad. Um, I tried to get into it, but I just couldn't. I think it's like people go to this house or something, and there's like demons and of these like beautiful women and shit or something. And then um, Shadow Dead Riot was surprisingly, surprisingly pretty good. I think I gave it like a 7 out of 10. It might not be that amazing. It might just be because I was shocked by how good it was compared to the other ones. But, um, you know, I thought the acting was pretty solid in that one. And it's basically like a women in prison type movie. And it was actually pretty cool. It has um, Tony Todd in it, which basically, like, his character almost feels like it's kind of, like, tapered in there. Like, they try to make him the main character in this. But, like, it's really just, I don't know, it kind of feels like a later Hellraiser movie where they just put Pinhead in the movie. But... Overall, it wasn't horrible. <clears throat> then, after that, we have Black Christmas, the annoying cover where um, this is, you know, this thing for some reason is facing the wrong way compared to all my other DVDs. It really irritates me, but oh well, I picked this up at like a cash and culture, I think, for cheap and um, had to have it. Uh, this is obviously a classic movie. When I first saw it, I thought it was kind of overly hyped. I thought it was kind of boring and I just didn't understand why people loved it so much. Then I saw it at a drive-in and I kind of fell in love with it. Um, just the, I think the drive-in was a great place to see it because it was freezing cold outside and it just really fit with the atmosphere. The ending gave me chills and I think this is one that I'll like more and more as time goes on. So yeah, Black Christmas. Then after that, we have The Blob uh, from 1980-something. Um, yeah, I'm, I suck at this. Um, but uh, yeah, The Blob was also a movie that I hadn't seen when I was younger, and I checked it out, and I really enjoyed this one, too. It's just like a fun 80s movie with, of course, those good uh, practical effects in it. Um, thought it was really good. Need to check it out again because I've only seen it once, and my memory is kind of foggy on it, but I know I really enjoyed this one. Then we have Burnt Offerings. Uh, this is actually one of my favorite movies ever. One of my favorite horror movies, that is. Uh, it kind of reminds me, honestly, of like an earlier version of The Shining because like it's about people who move into this place and then one of the family members is slowly, slowly kind of going mad and the rest of the family is also being affected by it. So, of course, The Shining is one of my favorite movies, so this is also one of my favorite movies. This one is another one that's a little bit cheesy and dated, nowadays, but when I was younger, this creeped me the hell out, especially with the uh, chauffeur at the funeral and things like that. It was just such, it had so many random creepy things going on in it, and yeah, I really enjoy burn offerings. Some people think it's like really too slow for its own good, but I don't mind it. Then we have Cabin Fever. Uh, this is another movie I really enjoy. It's another one that still holds up. It's one of those want weird ones where it came out in like 2002, I believe, and it feels very, very recent. Like 
a lot, some of the early 2000 movies feel very old and almost depressing to me because, like, you know, I was around childhood in the early 2000s. I'm 20 now, and when I see movies from the early 2000s and see that they look almost dated now, it makes me feel really old and it's weird. But this movie feels like it could have came out last year, and I still feel that way upon rewatches. Um, I think it's a really good movie. It's got some actual laugh-out-loud moments, but it's also horrifying and disgusting, and any movie that can taper those in together well is a win for me. So yeah, Cabin Fever. Next up we have Candyman. Um, I'm glad I got this cover. I don't like that other cover where dude's just standing up on it and it's all red and shit, but um, yeah, uh, Candyman is, what can I say, it's a good movie. It actually, like, the vibes in it and, like, the setting almost reminds me of Child's Play. Just, like, you know, the rundown kind of setting that they're in. Um, and I like that about it. And I've only seen this movie once as well. But, you know, I think Tony Todd does a great job in it. Um, I wish, it sucks that, like, the I watched the sequel and it wasn't that good. And then I heard the third one's not that good either. It kind of sucks that they kind of flopped like that, but Candyman is definitely a classic. It's a great movie. It's a horror movie, especially for the 90s, probably one of the best. Um, definitely one that I will um, continue to revisit as time goes on. And then lastly for this part, guys, sorry this is going on for like over 20 minutes. I talk a lot about movies, did not realize that, but um, we have The Car. Uh, the car is one that I saw when I was like 13, and at that time I thought it was kind of stupid, didn't really love it too much, and um, recently I tried to rewatch it with my friends like JP and Matt to see if it, like, you know, if I gave it another chance, maybe I'd like it more now that I'm older, and it's still just not that great to me. Like, I know some people think this is a great film and they can't get enough of it, and, you know, I love road horror and, like, you know, cars coming to life type horror things like that set in like these like deserted type areas but you know this one's just not that great it's very slow and feels like it takes forever I don't know it's just just not my taste really but you know this cover's kind of cool it's got like this cool sheen to it but yeah anyway that's the car and um that'll be it for this part I'll try to keep the other ones a little shorter didn't realize this was going on for so long so sorry about that guys but Hope you enjoy this and I will see you in the second part. See ya.